Anyways, picks and bans are done now that we've had our lovely Timo rant. Um, and in terms of bans, blue team has banned out Vikas and Yasuo. Oh, thank God they're out of the game. Uh, purple team has banned out Mundo, Jax, and Kha'Zix. Uh, Jax is pretty po potent. We don't see him played that often anymore, but he is a very large threat if he is able to survive the landing phase at all. Uh, I would have liked to see a uh, Gragas ban. Gragas is really powerful right now uh, and almost never banned. In terms of picks, then, we have blue team picking up a jungle Wukong, which is gaining popularity right now, even though I don't like it. It's very good. It's good. I just don't like it personally. I don't like playing jungle. Um, we then have a Renekton top, a Leona Draven bot lane. Oh god, that's so much damage. And then, of course, a Gragas mid. On the flip side, we have the non-conventional picks. We have a Poppy top who, uh, if you make it through landing phase, wins the game pretty much. A Lee Sin jungle, a Thresh Sivir bot lane, and a, oh my god, we have a Mordekaiser mid. Um, interesting picks, only because blue team essentially has the, the standard, oh my god, we decimate you, we have OP champion serve team comp. But if you look at the other side, if any of them really get ahead, they're going to be pretty terrifying. If Mordekaiser actually lands a combo, if he doesn't get shut down, Mordekaiser's damage is insane. What happens if Mordekaiser gets a Draven Ghost? Like, that's going to be pretty scary. And then, of course, you have Poppy, who just makes himself completely invulnerable and is able to pick off low health targets to ensure that you do get a Mordekaiser Ghost. And then you have Thresh, Sivir, and Lee Sin, who can all disengage nicely. So, I wouldn't say it's a good team comp, but it definitely has ways that it could be played to win. And I'm interested to see if they play towards their strengths, aka assassination and um, and and essentially disengaging. But at the same time, I'm interested to see how it's played against because there's very little counterplay to to um, to Poppy when played properly and a past landing phase. I'm interested to see if they just kind of go ham and say, well, yeah, but we have damage, and if it comes back to bite them or not. And I just want to point out that Mordekaiser as number one. He has shield, never died. Yes, it's but always shield. Right, but Mordekaiser was actually played during LCS, and I believe it was actually Mordekaiser versus Morgana in that game in mid lane, which was really delightfully season one. Um, and Mordekaiser's biggest weaknesses, his lack of mobility, his lack of uh, engage, uh, are really supplemented by his team. You have Thresh. If Thresh lands a hook, uh, Mordekaiser can easily follow up. You have Sivir's ult, which gives him like excellent move speed. You have Poppy, uh, who can shove people away from him or just kind of run around wrecking face. So Mordekaiser uh, was a really unconventional pick, but I actually like the way that he... Yeah, they, they have really good options to make it work in this team. I'm more concerned, though, is how are they going to play against the Poppy-Mordekaiser combo? Because if Mordekaiser gets a ghost on anyone, Poppy can just say, okay, target acquired, and go kill them. Right, um, Wukong is an interesting pick. Wukong has actually been acknowledged by Zyphirius and a couple other reds to be OP, but he's never really flavor of the month, so he's never uh, really been hit with the nerf bat. Now that he's picking up with popu uh, popularity, I'm interested to see whether they start to really focus on him. Okay, so I'm taking a look at Runes and Masteries. This is interesting to me. Poppy is running a Magic Pen. Magic Pen, Magic Resist, Armor, and then Move Speed Quints. Move Speed Quints are nice on Poppy, but it's interesting to me that he's running very, very aggressive, 21-7-2, and Magic Pen, so I'm assuming it's going AP Assassin Poppy. Uh, then for other runes, Lee Sin does not have a full rune page. He has 15 attack damage, no, no armor, no Magic Resist. So that's going to make his jungle really weak. Uh, and then, of course, he's running 21-9-0 as well, so that's going to be very, very fragile if he gets caught out. Um, I would expect to see Wukong trying to duel Lee Sin because of that. That being said, Lee Sin does counter Wukong, is able to detect his stealth. But in terms of flat-out dueling, Wukong with uh, lifesteal, magic resist, armor is going to be pretty beefy in those exchanges. Uh, Renekton, in the meantime, has 15 AD, uh, st standard full AD combo, uh, AD magic resist armor, 921-0, should be able to zone and make Poppy's life a living hell. Uh, Leona is running full, full armor, 25.47 armor, 
18.99 magic resist, and then 0.723. So that's going to be incredibly tanky, combined with the Draven, who is running standard standard uh, runes, except he has a couple armor pen runes in there, which is not standard. So I lied. Uh, bum 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 bum. Gragas has magic pen, armor, magic resist, and AP, so really standard AP. Thresh has a little bit of a mixed rune page, but overall it's, it's pretty much what you... Wait, no, it's not what you'd expect. His 15 AP. Interesting. So Thresh is running an AP rune page. Uh, not not a whole lot of reason to do that. You'd want AD for auto attack harass. Sivir running 19 attack damage, zero armor, and then magic resist per level. That's going to be a problem for her. Uh, 22, 2, and 6. And your versus a Draven Leona. You have no armor, no defensive masteries. That's going to hurt. Uh, Mordekaiser, on the, in the meantime, is running Spell Vamp Quince. I don't agree with that. Spell Vamp is not that strong. You'd be better off running Health Regen Quince at that point. You'd get more health back. And then you wouldn't also be able to be zoned for, as easily from, from creeps. Right. The thing is, Spell Vamp was eventually, uh, originally meant to be... Uh, oh god, did you have a buggy field. game where it just, like, randomly started a minute in? Wait, what? The game just started for me a minute in. Oh, huh. Yeah, I'm a minute in as well. Okay. Um, hmm. Uh, in terms of builds, it's pretty much what you'd expect. Doran's shield on both top laners, a Doran's shield on Mor Mordekaiser. The only really strange thing is that we have Minions a longsword start on Sivir. I believe Sivir is really going balls to the wall here. She is expecting to... Uh, Boomerang Blade, Draven right in the face and take him down. The thing is, Draven is not especially fragile. Oh, Leona goes in. We have an invasion from Blue Team. And that's going to be a sacrifice blue buff. Good timing, only going in when you know that you're able to. Uh, you, you don't want to go in early be like, well, we, we got a flash, and then not get the buff. Stealing away a blue buff is actually really important. Uh, obviously, it's not going to shut down Lee Sin as much as you might like, though. Right, uh, they do, uh, blue is a little less essential now that wolves and wraiths restore health and mana on kill, but it's still a huge chunk of XP you lose. Uh, the regen uh, for mana is a really important on a lot of junglers, like a Moo Moo, not so much on Lee Sin. But it's a really nice, aggressive start, and when Lee Sin is already running behind on runes, um, that can really set him behind. Okay, the game has been paused. I assume someone disconnected or has to uh, wash their cat or something. I need to go wash my cat. I'm going to stop shoutcasting now. I'll go wash your cat, Brian. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm always mean, Brian. You know this. Wait, is someone actually taking a food break? If so, unpause and, like, just kill them over and over again. Show no mercy. Okay, apparently he's his belly is full, so now he can play. We see Lee Sin joining mid lane, uh, actually, right now. And he's going to get a little bit of his experience bar back from that. And it looks like he's trying to move over to just counter steal the other red. Whereas Wukong, expecting that, goes right over. Oh, I'm going to rewind that. I'm sure, that's so exactly what we would have expected to happen. And that's because Draven is not a particularly squishy pick. I mean, you can go in on him early, but he has so much damage and he's comfortable standing and fighting, especially when he has uh, his axes leveled up. And that just boiled down to Thresh not being there. You can't try and 1v2 versus a Leona Draven. Hell, you can't even stay in lane versus a Leona Draven if you are not underneath your tower. Like, there, there's so, so much damage coming out from them. Draven is an interesting pick to me. Um, we were talking about Ziggs last week or the week before, and we said that Ziggs is so strong right now because during season 2 and 3, it was, uh, Ziggs is just damage. Leona go going in, uh, Draven is just laying damage down on, on uh, Thrash and picks up another kill. Only three and a half minutes in, so bottom line is in a pickle right now. 
And unfortunately, a lot of that just boils down to the team. Like, you, you you don't have a team comp to deal with the Draven Leona. You didn't pick to counter it. Right, and with Lee Sin being counter jungled, uh, bottom lane is going to have to be very defensive, and they're going to be dealing with a lot of harass on bottom. That's going to be very painful for them. Yeah, Poppy but getting harassed like you would expect to see, but she is freezing reasonably well. She's freezing at turret and getting the majority of her farm. She's not getting all of it, but she's not doing terribly either. Poppy's an interesting uh, choice because uh, with the gold changes, I've seen Poppy take an ancient, cho uh, ancient coin and just uh, soak up gold on top. She's going for a D-shield instead, which gives her some uh, resistances against Renekton. So that's not a bad choice by any means, but she will uh, be coming to her full power a little later on. Yeah, I, I was saying that she was doing well with last hitting, not so much anymore. She's missed a lot. She is getting bullied around by the Renekton, which Renekton is a very potent pick versus Poppy because there's not really any counterplay to him. It's not like, oh, why well, did I dodge this skill and now you do no damage? Yeah, you can maybe dodge one or two of his skills even, but if, he's just going to walk up and stun you and then land his combo if he's competent. Renekton has been described as not problematic. Oh, Leona going in again on Thresh. Uh, Draven just laying down damage, picked up another kill at the five minute mark. And that boiled down to th uh, Thresh was way up in the bushes. And of course, Leona's going to engage onto you. If Leona lands a hook, you're dead. And. Yeah. Right. They've really hit Thresh's early game power. He used to be a tank in an early game who would just walk in the lane and be very hard to hit. And while he didn't, didn't scale thanks to his passive unless he got souls, he was still very strong early game just from his base stats. And they've really gone through and changed that. Wukong bullying Lee Sin out of his own jungle. And this is what I said would happen. When you don't have any armor, you don't have any magic resist, why would he be scared to fight you? Poppy trying to turn back and fight, but completely out of mana now. I, Poppy has so many mana issues, and it's one of the reasons she's not played. You're melee, you have no range, you have no sustain, and hey, you also have crazy mana costs. If you didn't have mana costs, you could deal with the rest of it. Renekton has been described as problematic by the developers before. Oh, they're diving on Poppy. Poppy is almost dead. Wukong going in and gets a kill from red buff. I'm pretty sure there was actually a minion that finished it off. Because I saw some particles floating towards him. Eh, it could have been either. Like, she was so low. What matters is she died, ultimately. Poppy being dead is all that matters to me. <laughs> the Renekton has been described by, as a problematic, uh, problematic pick by the reds. Not because he's necessarily... If you look back bot lane, they're doing pretty much the same thing. They're shoving into this turret, and if you are outside of your own, you're going to be in a lot of danger versus Leona Thresh. They want to be freezing just outside their turret. They don't want it pushed towards the, the enemy team, or they're going to put themselves in a very dangerous position. Right. Getting Ricochet is not important on, on Sivir when you can just have Boomerang bl Blade. And that's fine for last hitting. When you have Ricochet, you naturally push the lane, which you do not want to do against the Fed Draven. But yeah, Renekton is a bully who kind of pushes out a lot of unconventional picks top. Uh, characters like Renekton is why you, a lot of people demand you put a tanky bruiser top. Because a Renekton will just eat your face otherwise. And then they send Renekton mid, and you cry. Well, they are changing him to be a little more relevant late game, so hopefully he'll be a little less of a just unstoppable bully. Traven just chunking Sivir's health. So I'm not sure... Wukong was trying to fight a full shield, um, not Malzahar, the Mordekaiser, and I, I'm not quite sure why. You have mana cost, he doesn't, he has a shield, you don't. And another kill going in bot lane because they hit level 6 first. They're pushing their level advantages very, very well, and they're identifying and exploiting positional weaknesses. 
So that's really, really good synergy there and good decision making between the two of them. Uh, looks like Wukong is wanting to do a dragon. That would be a good pick for them. Uh, Draven's super fed, so, and Leona can tank it, so it's really easy for them to take this away. Shiver is kind of doubling down on questionable item choices she made. She's going for a zeal early on. Zeal has no sustain. It has attack speed, it has a little bit of movement speed. So it's not, you know, the worst item in the world, but it, it, what are you going to build it into? A shiv so you can push to the lane faster? She has no damage, she has no sustain. She has no survivability against a fed raven, and that is a really unfortunate choice. Yeah, zeal is not not what you want to build here. Um, I have a question for you. I know we've had Squirtle in a number of games. Does he usually just dominate if you put him in AD carry? Uh, I played against him as Sivir, I believe, and we went toe to toe until I disconnected. But okay. he is very good at what he does. I believe he is one of the best ADCs we do have in workshops. I don't. Th I don't believe he's ever just like. Okay, I, I think we need to graduate him from the workshop. I, I was just double checking, and Brian agrees that yeah, he plays AD carry on top, and he's pretty much dominated the workshops we put him in. So uh, every once in a while we do that, where if someone is pretty much just single-handedly influencing the outcome of all of these games that they're placed in we try and avoid putting them into future workshops. We quote-unquote graduate them, which is a nice way of saying thank you for your support, but this workshop is for people who might not be quite as good as you are. Don't worry though, when you do graduate, um, I will collaborate with you to make a little piece of artwork to thank you for your support. Just a little something to say, uh, grats on owning those noobs. Oh my lord. Okay, so Draven went right to Infinity Edge. He has Infinity Edge at 10 minutes. I, I'm scared, bro. I, I, I'm scared. Yeah, um, this is a little, a little one-sided here, unfortunately. I was saying earlier that Draven is an interesting pick, and he's a lot like Ziggs. During Season 2 and, and 3, Ziggs was just damage. So people would pick like Ari, who's damage and mobility, or like Malzahar, who's damage and a suppression and so on, over Ziggs. But then, just damage became really important. Draven's the same way, he's just damage. He's not Draven, uh, he's not damage and an initiate. He's not damage and, uh, you know, Sivir's pushing power and so on. Oh, Leona just stole like away Molly, white from Lee. Leona has no mercy. She's just she's just going full ham. Yeah, I, I think so we just, just need to graduate them at this point. With the uh, with the support changes, where supports are way more relevant, they're way more gold, having just damage isn't really a drawback anymore. You don't need more than just damage when you have a Leona, when you have a Thresh, you know. It's, uh, that's, that's honestly enough. At this point, Draven and Leona are fearless. They are shoved. Um, if this was a less one-sided game, a jungle or a mid could wrap around and, and uh, pose a threat. They actually but have Draven very good wards to avoid that possibly happening. Right, that's a good point. But Draven at this point is just completely fearless. He is not afraid of Mord, he's not afraid of Lee Sin, and he doesn't really have a reason to do Hopefully, as we work our way through the season, more and more people will essentially fall or rise to their correct rating. Unfortunately, as we're starting a season, a lot of people haven't done their placements, and even more have done the placements and been placed really low or really high. And unfortunately, that means that it's a little bit more difficult to, to do proper matchmaking. Uh, we're starting to see it get a little bit better. Unfortunately, this is an outlying game where... Wow, uh, oh, we have another engage coming in from Leona. She's just going full, full ham kill goes over to Gragas. Uh, is this the stream for the RP giveaway? Yes, it is. We have done an RP giveaway already. We are currently doing a Steam game giveaway. We do an RP giveaway I every single Sunday. I gotta say, Leona's current dominance on bottom line. I don't even know if Leona needs a nerf. 
I just think we need to see some love for traditional supports. Nami, Janna, Soraka, Sona. Yeah, unfortunately, all of the champions that counter hard engage supports are pretty mediocre or even flat out bad right now. Jenna is not actually that bad. I've been playing her a little bit more, but it's so difficult to influence the outcome of lane. You're essentially sacrificing the chance of winning a lane for the gamble of being able to draw the lane. You essentially just want to stall out the, the laning phase until your carry can be useful. I actually have a 100% win rate on Yana right now in rank, which granted I've only played like 3 games with her. That being said, her disengage is- she's one of those champions with such a strong kit. Oh, Draven. Draven, people are like, there are kids watching this at home. You need to stop. Yeah, inappropriate touching is happening with his axes. Another kill goes over to Gragas. Unfortunately, it's so hard to commentate or offer advice on this game because it is so one-sided. And we do our best to avoid this, but unfortunately, sometimes it is unavoidable. But uh, Jana right now is actually, she's seen a boost to win rate, partly because she hard counters uh, Leona, but partly because she's still the best disengage in the game. Like, she has one of those kits where no matter how hard you hit her numbers, she's still intrinsically useful. Wukong coming around Thrasher's and behind, Leona engages with her E, ult comes out from Wukong, that's going to be a, a rather large wombo combo. They only end up taking out Thresh though, so good job the rest of them not being taken out in that combo, but again, we, we're just a little bit far gone at this point. A blue team is doing very well at picking up objectives, they have dragon timers, they're picking up dragon when it's safe. Blue team has Thresh at this point has a very uh, objective all trades kit, and at this point he's still really trying to like land hooks and, and try to try to pull people into his team. When really right now he should be focusing on getting lanterns and fillets out to protect his team. That's his best shot. Trying to hook people is really not useful at this point. Yeah, he's trying to play like a blitz uh, blitzcrank where you just make a pick for your team. Boom, we landed a grab. All go in on that target. That's not gonna... Okay, Thresh just stole the the wraiths. I'm not sure why. <laughs> but yeah, basically, he needs to be focusing on disengage. You have a very strong disengage kit on, on Thresh between your Lantern, your Flay, which can interrupt dashes, uh, that sort of thing, and you also have your alt to stop people diving in onto your team. Directed at this point, he's very farmed, but he's he's just holding his lane. Purple team will occasionally come up and try to push. Right now, uh, Leona and Gragas are collapsing. Renekton doesn't need to be incredibly fat, but he just needs to be fat, and he's doing that quite well. He's big bone. No, I'm, I'm definitely not trying to um, shame any proud independent wizards. We still haven't seen you play the Lizard Wizard in, in our ranked workshops. I'm very disappointed by this. Oh, oh my bad, my bad. I'll break out AP or next in one of these days, get a pentakill, etc. I haven't got a pentakill recently, it makes me sad. I've gotten one pentakill ever on this fortune, the second pentakill I ever could have possibly got. I was Katarina, I got a quadra, and then Shen flashed, ghosted, used his t uh, taunt so that he could throw his Q and get the last kill. Nice. No, it was it was really heartbreaking. I, I, I think I cried a little. Sivir should not be trying to hold that alone. The entire team is on it, and what are your chances of being able to 1v4? Even with a tower, you're not going to be able to. They're going to dive on you, you are going to dive. So that that is one comment that I can make for her here is don't try and hold turrets if you can't do so safely. There are a few champions who have a good chance at holding turrets against overwhelming odds like Karma, Quinn. Sivir is not one of those champions. Anivia. Anivia, right. Uh, Come on, Donna. if you're gonna say something there, just Anivia. I don't know. 
how she planned it. Be like, I understand her strengths, but she's, she's just, I don't know. She doesn't really do anything for me. I don't find her very visually interesting. So. Like, if I want to play a bird, I'd play Quinn. I, I feel like there's some sort of joke in that about uh, frosty chicks. You'll get there someday. I believe in you. Someday. I'll, I'll break it out maybe next week. Draven just right, able to like, tank yeah, like... the tower and and just kill it essentially. Uh, Leona does go in onto Sivir. Sivir is actually going to get a kill here. Nope, nope. Thresh, uh, not the Thresh. Yeah. The Flash, not the Thresh. <laughs> Flash comes out from Leona and she is able to just walk away. Leona clearly knows her champion's capabilities and how fast she is bad to all get out, but she also knows how many tower hits she can take, how many auto attacks she can take. She knew to flash sort of over the corner of the wall instead of just flashing straight away. So that was a nice save on her part. Uh, good combo coming out from Gragas, knowing to flash over the minions so that his body slime won't get caught by them, and then just uh, faceplant into the lovely, lovely Sivir's face. Executed. As much as I uh, suggest avoiding the blame game, it is uh, we already did point out that Thresh did not join his AD carry, and in that sort of a lane, you must be together at all times, you must be in proper position, or you're going to have a rough time. I'm not saying, yeah, blame the Thresh, it's his fault, but I am saying it's, it's everyone's fault. You all need to be playing as a team, and that was a misplay, Looking definitely. Renekton, a uh, good de decision to just stay top, constantly push this in. He's not needed. There is no reason that he would have to join for a team fight. So why not just keep taking globals? Poppy goes into the wall, drops down the diplomatic immunity, continues to stay on Draven. It looks like she, no, she will not get the kill because of barrier and that pesky Leona, but it was dang close. And she would have got away with it too if it wasn't for that pesky Leona. tear off the villain's mask. Oh my god, it was Leona the entire time? I'm pretty sure Draven would be under that mask. I don't know, I don't think Draven really does masks. I think he would just roll around as Draven committing crime. Crash again tries to hook in onto the champion, and again, we've said it a number of times now, a hook is not going to do anything. Don't try to. Instead, focus on sticking with your team and disengaging fights that can be disengaged through your lantern and through your um, your flay. Leona alt not connecting. And the Greg assault does Greg connect. Renekton goes in. Baby. Ignites not going to be able to follow it up, though. Uh, Poppy trying to chase back out onto the Renekton. Ghost goes over to Mordekaiser, and they take down Leona as well. They're not going to be able to pick up anyone else on this, though, unless someone purposely doesn't try to escape. Calling MVPs is extremely difficult in a game like this, but I will have to say, for a purple team, Mordekaiser is the MVP. He won his lane through farm, even though he got a few kills. He's only three kills down in a game with 27 deaths. That's 27 to 6. You know, he did uh, manage to get a Renekton ghost during that fight. So Mordekaiser's in a really unfortunate situation, but managed to, you know, sort of make the best of his lane. Unfortunately, that wasn't enough to win the game, but... Some games just can't be won, so good try regardless. Yeah, for sure. Now, I do have a concern, uh, Wukong, as he was walking out, he kind of just stealthed and then turned around and eed, and I think that he could have escaped if he hadn't done so. Uh, 
At this point, uh, there's no way they're going to be able to stop Baron. They're just going to take this, and I hope they will use it to just end the game, because unfortunately, this is not a learning experience for anyone, really. Unfortunately, we did not have chat on, but um, unfortunately, there are some solo queue uh, chats going down with Lu Kong asking, Surrender? We pretty much win. This is a friendly game, guys. This is people trying to improve. Please try to, like, avoid surrender or early GG calls. If it would piss you off from a solo key participant, please don't do it in these games. Poppy tries to go in on Draven, and unfortunately, you're alting someone who has a ridiculous amount of damage. You're gonna die. Uh, you'd be better off alting someone who's a tank who has used their CC, or even alting like a, a Renekton who might be able to stun you once, but isn't going to be able to kill you. Red team's inhibitor has been destroyed. Red team's inhibitor has been destroyed. Okay, just to end and the game at this point. Game, I believe. Or they're gonna feed themselves to the being a little silly here, like. Yeah, they're not gonna end the game apparently. I like the boost they gave to Poppy. So I've seen someone ask when players graduate. We graduate players when they eventually become too good at what they're doing. This is meant to be a game for players who are looking to improve and they are under gold 5. If you are playing at above that level and you're just rolling around going for instance 16 and 1, um, it's not a lot of fun and it's not incredibly helpful for the other players in the game. So at that point we graduate you from either the role or the games altogether. For instance, someone might be a fantastic ADC but suck at jungle. Um, and we I will provide you with like a little piece of art to thank you for your support and uh, congratulate you on that achievement. Oh, I like how apparently I targeted Gr Gragas. I apologize. Rush put the box down. I think that might be the first box I've seen from Rush all game. Um, at this point, the other uh, alt he's used has been trying to disengage to save himself, and then of course he just dies because he's I still alone. Draven, uh, Poppy puts diplomatic immunity on Draven. Probably not a great idea because uh, Draven is the source of their damage. You would probably want to put the immunity on uh, Leona or even Renekton, but on uh, Draven is probably not the best call. Okay, so he apologized for that game. Uh, again, he has now graduated. We are not having him in further games. Yeah, we probably need to graduate Nidalee as well soon. Um, the alternative rule would be that he's not allowed to play like a couple, a handful of champions that he's been using. Mm-hmm. Bizarre, so, um, right. what is the Twitch name of the gentleman who is playing Draven? Okay, so we are graduating Bizarre Squirtle and Nidalee. Uh, we may not let Nidalee in on other champions, because I know he's been trying to expand his roster a bit. I don't want to sound ungrateful or anything because we do really appreciate all of your support, 
But when when the games are going so one-sided so consistently, it's better to just sort of remove them from the workshops themselves, and they're more than welcome to join for fewer games, ranked duos, all of that stuff still. Um, so if Cute Killer Panda and the gentleman who play Draven in that game contact me through Twitch, I will be happy to arrange creating some art to celebrate your graduation. Okay, now unfortunately it's very difficult to go over builds in this game because again, the games were very one-sided. It's The gold is so one-sided that builds are going to be silly, builds are going to be so one-sided as, as well as the game was that it's just not going to be worth doing. So we're going to try and instead get into the next game as quickly as possible and uh, try and make up for that one. I apologize, guys. <laughs> 